Hi there and welcome to this special edition of In The Labs with me, Becky. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this hanging Christmas sign. So in the software, I'm going to show you how I drew up the vectors for the sign. Uh, then in terms of machining, this is a real simple cutout. We're just using a profile pass to cut this out. Uh, I've sprayed it gold, add a ribbon to hang it up, and that's pretty much it. So let's have a look at the software, how I I created this. Okay, so I'm working in VCarve, however, this project can be done in both Aspire and Cut 2D. So to start, we're going to start by drawing a circle that is 17 inches in diameter. This will represent the hanging sign. And we're going to take that vector and we're going to offset that inwards by three quarters of an inch. So we've got an outside and an inside. Next up, I have a sketch that I've drew out, took a photo and I've brought it onto my PC and we've took that image, copied it into the software, uh, by which case now I'm actually tracing around using the polyline tool. So the polyline tool will enable me to roughly sketch in the shapes and then by putting these vectors into node edit mode, I'm able to really control those vectors to get the shapes that I desire. So really, I just wanna go for the shapes that I've originally drew out. Okay, so all the blue nodes that you can see there are smooth points, which we can alter in node edit mode to give us a nice uh, smooth shape. Uh, I can alter the spans of a vector by pulling on them. I can also look at altering the control handles, pulling on those uh, until I have uh, the correct shape that I'm after. Okay, so almost pretty much done. So I've got my key elements and these elements are gonna represent the bottom portion of our wreath. Okay, so let's just turn off the bitmap. We're going to take those vectors, just move them over to the bottom right hand side. And then here, I'm just going to position these uh, individual vectors, rotate them around uh, the bottom right portion of our wreath. And then I'm going to look at copying some of these elements just to repeat uh, some of those patterns throughout the design. Uh, and so to do that, just simply select it and hold down the control key that enables us to create a copy there. Okay, so you can see I'm just working my way up the wreath. We're just going to work with the one side, so it's right hand side. And once I'm happy with this side, I'm going to look at copying everything over uh, to the left hand side using the mirror tool where we'll flip about the job center and create a mirror mirrored copy. So now we're going to take those vectors and we're going to weld them and then all of the internal vectors we're just going to delete them. Uh, then we're going to use the interactive trimming tool just to go through the bottom of the wreath there just basically clipping away all of those intersections so that ultimately we're left with two solid outlines one for the outside and one for the inside. So now we're going to look at adding in text. So we're going to use the draw text tool. I'm going to type in the word Merry Christmas. The font that I'm using is called Calligraphy Style. Okay, so with that in place, we can close out. I'm going to right click and we're going to break the text block into lines. So we're working with two separate text entities. So here we've got Merry, it's going to rotate that around and um, roughly position that uh, to the top portion of our hanging sign. So here what I want to do is I want to make sure that the M and the Y of the word are connecting to the uh, border of our sign. So when we come to cut this out, uh, everything's uh, intact and in place. Again, we're going to shrink the Christmas word down, position that, and again, we want the C and the S of that word uh, to be stretched over to the border uh, so that everything uh, is connected. Okay, so we're just going to take the word Merry and we're going to weld that text. Okay, so that's automatically welded the text for us. Take Christmas, we're going to weld that as well. And then any parts of the characters that aren't actually welding together, we're just going to size them, move them over so that they're overlapping. So you can see the C and the H there are now overlapping. Uh, and then we can just use the uh, interactive trim tools uh, just to basically join those together so that we've got one continuous continuous vector. Okay, we're just going to trim the ends of those letters into the border, delete that little part there uh, and then get rid of the M and the E 
connection okay so that's pretty much that we're going to create a hanging hole so we're going to draw a circle that's one inch at the top i'm going to offset that outwards by three quarters of an inch and again we're going to use that scissor tool just to clip away uh, all of the intersections so that we're left with the part that we want right and so that's pretty much everything in terms of the vectors we're going to take everything and switch over to the toolpaths tab so here we're just going to check over our material setup ensuring everything's safe and appropriate here and to select all of those vectors and apply a simple profile toolpath so we're cutting all the way through our material. I'm using a 0.115 inch end mill. Okay, so I'm going to machine it on the outside and we're just going to give that a name. We're going to call this profile cutout. Now I'm going to use double sided tape to hold this down. That's why I've not put any tabs in. We can preview that and then we can uh, double click on all of the waste material to get a good representation of what it is that we're cutting. So there is the sign. Okay, so I'm happy with what we've got there. So let's go ahead and save out those toolpaths, we'll save them and then we'll just give that a name and then we could go ahead and save them out. Okay, so we've got our toolpaths on our USB, let's head over to the CNC. Well, come on then. Okay, so as I mentioned in the software, we are using double-sided carpet tape to hold everything down. Uh, so this is actually quite strong, so this should give us a strong hold down. So here we're just marking out the space which we intend to use to machine our project into um, and then for extra security I'm actually going to look at using screws uh, we're going to screw into our MDF into the spoil board just for extra hold down.
now that all of the double sided carpet tape has been removed uh, we're actually just going to take uh, some fine grit of sandpaper and we're just going to carefully go around the edge of our sign as well as inside of the characters on the text just to clean it up before we go ahead and paint it. So we're going to use a primer uh, in a spray can form. We're just going to apply that to uh, both the top and the bottom of our sign just so that we've removed uh, any evidence that we are using MDF. Uh, and this will also act as a real nice base for when we come to apply uh, our finished coat. And so to finish it all up, I'm just using uh, an organza ribbon here to thread that through uh, the hanging hole for the sign. Uh, it will create a little bow uh, and that will enable us to hang our sign up. Okay, and so here is our finished hanging sign. So the paint's dry and we've got a real nice Christmassy sheen to it. Now, if you want to have a go at creating your own version of this sign, then simply head over to your b and Co account where you can download the project files from there. And if you do create your own, then please feel free to share that with us on our social media channels. If you like this video, then give us a thumbs up. And if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, then please hit the subscribe button for the latest updates on the videos that we'll be releasing. Thank you for watching and happy making.